the, the very beginning, you have the role of some Hindu Mahasabha and Chan Sang people, like this uh, KK Nayar, who had a sort of political you know, supervision over the events and made sure that the idols, once they were installed, remained there, which Nehru didn't like. Apparently, I think, you know, this is just anecdotal, but nevertheless, it, it's telling that he and his wife stood for elections, he for the Jansang and she for the Hindu Mahasabha, which at that time, even after Gandhi's murder, was still quite a presence in that region like especially Gorakhpur, but also Ayodhya. Mm. Then, uh, while it goes a bit into hibernation, so the place is cordoned off for the common worshippers, but it remains a temple because a priest performs the rituals. Then, uh, in 1983, it is another Hindu Mahasabha fellow, Mahanta Vaidyanath, the personal guru of Yogi Adityanath, and two Congress people who start this movement for the liberation of Rama's birthplace. These two Congress people are a local politician, Daudai Al Khanna, and quite importantly, an uh, ex Prime Minister, Gulzari Lal Nanda. So the Congress was really a party to the building of the temple. And later on, this becomes even clearer when Rajiv Gandhi becomes the, the Prime Minister. He actively pursues the building of the temple. Yes. But before I come to that, <laughs> in 1984, a year after the start of this movement, the VHP throws its lot in with this movement. That's quite important because they have the numbers. And so they bring in this whole uh, agitation, uh, car sevaks. Then um, at the government level, you know, Rajiv Gandhi does pursue a policy which at that time he conceives as the typical Congress side horse trading, you know, as if it's no big deal, you know, some sweeteners for the Muslim leadership. And then in return, you know, he's going to arrange for the temple for the Hindus. Mm -hmm. And so at that time, the Ayodhya issue was not yet the enormous polarizer that it was going to become. So he still thought that he could get away with this arrangement. Then you get the BJP, of course, with uh, they, they passed this Palampur resolution in 1989, and they start this uh, Ratsyatra. So even though today people say, no, the BJP had no merit in it, well, that at least was an important merit. Mm -hmm. But I have to add that after they win the elections twice, mm -hmm. because of this Ayodhya agitation, that then suddenly they withdraw from the affair. Because by that time, it has become a great polarizer. They feel it's like a hot potato. It's going to burn us at some point. Let's take a distance. And then especially after the demolition in 1992, they prefer not to be associated with it. Then, um, as you know, in 1989, there's an opposition government, as they used to call it in those days when Congress was the natural government party. And so then this VP Singh, you know, the leftist government, at first has an alliance with the BJP in the opposition, but then there's a clash between them uh, concerning the uh, stopping of the Ratyatra in Bihar and the shooting of the Karsevaks in Ayodhya. So then that government falls. The um, socialist uh, Chandra Shekhar becomes prime minister. There's a small minority government that's completely dependent on opposition support from the Congress. So then again, we have Rajiv Gandhi taking an important initiative. He makes sure that Chandra Shekhar calls a scholars meeting in essentially January uh, 1991. Now, he had made it clear several times when he was prime minister that for him, the decision whether there should be a temple in the future ought to depend on the scientific finding whether there was a temple in the past. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a polite way of saying, I want a temple, because everybody, <laughs> knew that there was evidence. 
You see, it's only in 1989 that the, the JNU historians come out with a statement, suddenly making this controversial and claiming that there was no temple there, which had a great influence. You know, it's only very rarely that, you know, us intellectuals have the pleasure of really making a difference. And so there, you know, just this statement by a number of uh, academics makes all politicians fearful. You know, suddenly it's not such an easy topic anymore. And, you know, the fear of being associated with Hindu fascism and all that. And so it becomes difficult. And at that point, or from that point onwards, the very idea of demolishing the mosque building, which is an inevitable part of the process towards building the temple, becomes unthinkable. That's also one reason why the BJP takes distance. So the scholars, of course, find enough evidence, uh, a bit more than was already available, but essentially they just continue the consensus that was there. So then you see nothing should stand in the way of building the temple. But a few things do stand in the way. The Supreme Court had promised a verdict before the 6th of December 1992, which the promise it didn't keep. And the BJP had called this gathering, but more to prove to the secularists, ah, we can control Hindu anger, rather than expressing that Hindu, you know, will to build the Rama temple. There have even been statements at the time that not only the BJP, the RSS, didn't want a demolition, even the VHP, in spite of the sentiments among their rank and file. Uh, so when the Karsevaks start with the demolition, not only the uh, not only Al Adwani was supposed to lead the ceremony, you know, he didn't like it at all. He, he collapsed, he started crying, and later on he called it the blackest day of his life. Even Ashok Singhal tried to stop uh, the people. Later on, um, with the Lieberhan Commission, about the guilt for the demolition and then the, 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 the court case that was to follow from it. There's a statement by the then head of the RSS, uh, K.S. Sudarshan, that there were actually Swayam Sevaks of the RSS posted to protect the mosque building, and that there were actual fights between the RSS deputies and the common rank and file, the Karsevaks. And so this is probably true. I mean, for, for all the documents and so on that we have the RSS, this sounds like a very true account. Yet, maybe there was one big leader who did support the demolition. And um, here I base myself, first of all, on the information given by a number of Karsevaks. But of them, you could still say, well, maybe they didn't know the whole picture. And so, especially the fact of being there does not necessarily mean that they're better informed. And, and the whole thing was, was happening. They were in the middle of it. 